Several years ago I made a video called Top 5 Worst Units in Total War Shogun 2, which has since become my third most watched video. Which on the surface sounds like a good thing, but unfortunately for me, it's not. You see, when I made this video, I was ignorant. I was unaware. I was stupid. I thought I knew everything about Shogun 2, but I was wrong. And I've had to hear that tens, no hundreds, no thousands of times since the release of that video. I'm of course talking about the fire projecting mangonels. No, I'm kidding. They're still the worst, but more on that later. Jokes aside, I was of course talking about the fire rockets. I placed these bad boys at the number 3 spot without having done proper research. And soon the public was up in arms calling for my head. I soon realized this had to be rectified and thus I made an apology video but a week later titled Fire Rockets Aren't All That Bad, where I explain how they're actually pretty darn strong after all. However, whilst this video has over 50,000 views and a whopping 99.3 like to dislike ratio, for every person that knows I admitted my mistake, there are five others who still think I'm simply a fool. I may be a donkey, but I am no foolish donkey. It is time then, to rectify my mistake once and for all, with this all new, completely updated, Top 5 Worst Units in Shogun 2 Definitive Edition. <coughs> Before we get down to the nitty gritty of this list, I must cover a few disclaimers. Bear with me folks. First of all, as with all of my top 5, top 10, top 183 lists, this list is based almost exclusively on single player legendary difficulty campaigns, and this does made with single player in mind and should not be used as a guideline for multiplayer. Also this list will not include any hero units or any units that were added in by DLC. A list including those will follow soon. Finally, after having read similar comments on many, many, many occasions, I feel the need to explain to you what a top 5 list is and how it works. Now, if you have more than 5 brain cells, you may wish to skip forward to whatever timestamp is appearing on your screen right now. But to those of you who spend most of your days ooing and doing, please listen closely. When making a top 5 list for Shogun 2, I need to take many things into consideration. Anything from recruitment and upkeep cost, availability, tech tree requirements and much more. This means that there might be a unit in this list that you really like, but you must remember that just because you like a unit, that does not automatically mean it's a good unit. Many people seem to argue that certain units are great in certain situations, and while that may be true, if said situation only occurs 3 times per campaign, it's not particularly reliable, is it? A couple of the units on this list are fairly decent in offensive sieges, but my philosophy in Total War games is that unless you optimize your army for offensive sieges, just don't fight offensive sieges. You should almost always siege out the enemy as it will result in much fewer losses. Which brings us to the point of optimizing armies for offensive sieges. You might say, well, I have several European cannons and fire protecting mangonels in my army and they're great in sieges. I say, well done, you've severely gimped yourself in every single situation that isn't an offensive siege. Do you start to see where I'm going with this? I have to go with the general consensus of units. A Naginata Samurai is great in every single situation. Sieges both offensive and defensive, field battles both offensive and defensive, ambushes, whatever. That's what makes a great unit in Shogun 2. Versatility, not specialism. Well, that was certainly quite the introduction to this video. I'm just trying to get ahead of all you naysayers out there, covering my ass in case of another outrage. With that said, I think it's about time we get into the- No, it's not. First, a quick word about Commanders of Valor, of whom the creators, Moonlit Sky Games, have kindly sponsored this video. Commanders of Valor is a tactical turn-based strategy game set before the Common Era. The game is currently in very early alpha, and thus I was only able to play a quick game of Romans vs Parthians with predetermined troops, but it gave me a decent idea of what this game is all about. Each unit has different characteristics, such as the Roman Astati, who can perform two actions in their turn as opposed to the Lighter Vilite unit, who can perform three, with cavalry of course being able to do even more. Actions can be one of three things, moving, attacking, or special, with each unit special being something different, like the Vilate being able to perform an additional action, the Astati going into Testuda formation of being impervious to ranged attacks, or the Roman commander who gets a huge damage bonus versus enemy cavalry. As I said, the game is currently in very early alpha, and in the build I played many functions and features were disabled, so keep an eye on this one to see how it develops. In order to do so, you can click on any of the free links in the description. The Kickstarter lets you support the game and get unique rewards, and the Instagram and Facebook page lets you see the screenshots and updates as the game develops. Now, from one strategy game into another, let's finally get into the list. Starting us off as the fifth worst unit in Shogun 2 is... Yari Samurai. This is a unit that made its way over from the previous list, and has even retained its spot at number 5. Now before you get all up in arms, let me just explain why I've decided to keep them here. Yari Samurai is one of those examples I talked about earlier. 
They are a unit that specializes in something. They are arguably the strongest anti-cavalry unit in the game, which sounds great on paper, but is not as strong as you might think. Consider your other options when it comes to anti-cavalry. Yari Ashigaru, Naginata Samurai, Naginata Warrior Monks, Yari Cavalry, etc. All of those units do an adequate enough job at defeating enemy cavalry whilst outperforming Yari Samurai in other categories. Taking once again my beloved Naginata Samurai as an example. They have more armor and a higher melee attack, making them a great frontline unit, whilst also having a solid anti-cavalry bonus to make them great unit to cover your flanks too. Yari Samurai have rapid advance, allowing them to catch enemy cavalry quicker, but why would you? The AI will always charge their cavalry into your units anyway. They're not smart enough to make you chase them, making it an almost irrelevant ability. I haven't even talked about the most damning thing of all, which is of course the fact that a Yari Samurai loses to a Yari Ashigaru in Yari Wall one on one. How sad is that? Moving on to number 4, where we find Matchlock Ashigaru. This is a new addition to the list, and one I should have included originally. Matchlock units in Shogun 2 are a bit of a pet peeve of mine. As many of you will be aware, I tend to finish my campaigns in around 100 turns, which simply doesn't give me enough time to get Gunpowder Mastery unlocked after getting all the important tech done first. Even if I did have time though, why would I then recruit Matchlock Ashigaru? Imagine this, you're about 120 turns into a campaign, you're running around with a couple of doomstacks all consisting of Naginata Samurai, Bow Warrior Monks and Yari Cavalry, because you're a good little boy who listens to Uncle Donkey. Great, you've now unlocked Matchlock Ashigaru, and you can recruit them anywhere! Time to remove your highly experienced Bow Warrior Monks with over 100 accuracy to replace them with a slow firing unit whose fire by rank ability doesn't even work right. Do you get what I'm saying? The exception to this would be the Otomo, who get access to them much sooner, but as I'm not covering DLC units, this is irrelevant. And even if it was relevant, I'd point out that you can recruit Portuguese Tercos pretty soon afterwards and move on with my day. Next up at number 3 we have Firebomb Throwers. Uh uh uh, before you start telling me they're great at defending sieges, please remember what I told you earlier. Just because a unit is great at one particular thing does not a good unit make. Also, after having done the legendary stealth units only challenge run, I would argue that they're not so great at defending sieges after all. Granted, I used Kisho Ninja in that challenge, but the ranged weapon stays the same. They do a lot of damage, it's just that they're not particularly accurate with where they deal that damage. On numerous occasions my Kisho Ninja had decided that defending the castle was too easy for them and promptly blew up their own wall and killed most of their own unit with it. Firebomb throwers will do the same thing, so they're not even that good at the one thing they're supposed to be good at. Others have told me you're supposed to put them right behind your infantry and they'll destroy enemies as they're charging your infantry. I can confirm this too works about as well as brushing your teeth with a screwdriver. You'll do more damage to your teeth than you clean. Hold on to your toilet paper, because we're getting to the real shit now. At number 2 we find the European Cannons. In the old top 5 worst units I'd placed the European Cannons at a shared number 1 spot, but after hearing everyone's furious cries I've decided to give it the benefit of the doubt and put it at number 2 instead. Are you happy now? European Cannons are the prime example of a terrible unit that serves only a single purpose. Well, two purposes, I'll give it that. First of all, it can destroy towers and sieges. Fucking yes! Those nasty towers always sitting there shooting at your men in sieges you shouldn't have fought in the first place. They can shoot at walls too, but unless they've got some accuracy upgrades and experience they'll run out of ammo before they do any real damage. And again, what are you doing fighting sieges? Siege the enemy out, fight a defensive field battle, so much better. The only real use a European cannon has is to make the enemy come towards you in offensive field battles due to its range. I'd honestly rather have an extra bow warrior monk though. They outrange everything else too and do a lot more damage. You're thinking, European cannons don't sound so bad? Well wait till you hear this. In order to recruit European cannons you need to convert to Christianity, which alone is a huge commitment that changes your entire campaign, and certainly isn't worth doing just for European cannons. You also need to build a Nanban quarter, of which you can only technically build one, so that's great. Also the nail in the proverbial coffin, European cannons can't move after deploying, so if you have to move anywhere outside of your deployment zone, be prepared to wave your cannons goodbye. Finally at number 1, we have of course, the one and only, vomit inducing mangonels. The absolute worst of the bunch. You can closely compare fire projecting mangonels with the European cannons at number 2, which is why I placed them at number 1 together in the old video. However, the difference between the two units is accuracy. While European cannons can't hit the broad side of a barn, the European mangonels can't even hit the field the barn is in. The only redeeming factor is that when they do hit, they actually do quite a decent bit of damage, but they are just so incredibly unreliable that they're never worth the trouble. 
If you're hellbound on using a long range unit simply to make the enemy come towards you, then you might as well go with European cannons. That said, fire projecting mangonels can be recruited without ruining your entire campaign by switching religion. All you need is a powder maker, which requires the attack by fire tech, which you get just before gunpowder mastery, the tech that takes about a billion years to unlock, so whoopty fucking do on that. Fire projecting mangonels, similar to their western cousins, also cannot move once deployed. Both units also slow down your army on the campaign map as an added bonus to their clunkiness. Some people will argue that the cannons and mangonels require an army to be built around them to be effective, but I would argue that they'd never be effective enough to be worth the trouble of building an army around them when there's so many other great units out there that don't require anything to make them effective. I'd also argue that this makes them even worse units, as I've stated before. Versatility is king, and needing other units to make you better is the opposite of versatile. Now you might start to understand why I rated these combined worst units in the old video. I think that about does it for this video. Feel free to argue how wrong I am in the comments and I'll see you in another 3 years for an update on this list. In all seriousness though, I do believe these units are the absolute worst in the game. But as I explained quite clearly, some of them have a redeeming factor or two, whilst others honestly should never be used in any serious way. Don't get me wrong, I love going into custom battles and blowing shit up with fire projecting mangonels, but fun does not equal good. Line up 20 mangonels against 60 infantry and they'll sure as shit do a lot of damage, but that's not an accurate representation of your average campaign. Hopefully you all now understand how and why I've come to this list definitive version. If you disagree, you are of course welcome to voice your opinion, so long as you remember one very important thing, I don't give a shit. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out all the links in the description to my Shogun 2 themed merchandise, my Patreon if you want to support me and want to see more of these types of videos, and of course the Commanders of Valor links. Now. Go have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.